What's good, people? This is Elder J. O. McWaller here in the building, ready to do another video for, especially for my newbies. We're talking about gardening tools, especially gardening tools for the beginner. So when we talk about gardening tools, I'm going to be talking about gardening tools for people who use basically a container gardening method or the raised bed gardening method. If you have a very large in-ground garden or farm, I'm not going into that equipment that you guys are going to be using, but the equipment that I am going to be showing is equipment that pretty much everybody uses. It's just not going as far as the most advanced tool. Okay, so let's go over the basic things that you must have, okay? You're going to have to get yourself a good trowel, garden trowel, right? Hand trowel. Now, I purchased a garden kit. It came with two of these they are similar but not the same uh one you can see has a wider head than the other one does the other one has these numbers on it you can see that this is what they call a transfer trial so it has these numbers on there to allow you to be able to uh, see what depth you want to dig something down in and you can transfer like that to be honest i really think you only need one good trial I recommend one with good rubber handle and steel. You can go to the dollar store and pick up something like this. I like the sturdier ones because when you're sometimes you're digging, the soil gets a little heavy. Those little dollar store ones sometimes, because they have a little small neck here, they begin to bend and over time they can break. I don't like the plastic ones, so I recommend these. Now, even though this is uh not necessary not a must i do use this for certain things sometimes when i'm trying to dig out some weeds or things that are have very deep roots because the smaller ones have that sharper tip it allows me to actually go in a little bit deeper and i can actually cut the roots or something that's really deep down in something with something like this a little bit better than I can with something like this. So I kind of use both of them, but really you only need the one. Next thing you're gonna need, cultivator. Um, these come in a variety of shapes. Again, I bought a kit, so all of mine have the little rubber t uh, handled steel grip on them. Love these things. Um, they last long, they're nice and heavy and weighted. and uh, it comes with two. It comes with the straight fork and it comes with the the uh, curved fork. The one that you I recommend is the curved fork. What I use these for a lot of times for weeding and sometimes when I'm trying to plant things after I have put mulch down, I like to use this to clear the mulch out of the way. The straight one you really don't need, but what I like to use these for sometimes if I'm transplanting something, I will use this to dig down and to be able to loosen the plant out so that I can dig it out good to be able to transplant. I kind of use that for this. And I do also use this interchangeably with this one. Like if I can't find this one, I misplaced it, I'll use the straight one, same way. So, but you really only need one. Again, you can get this from a dollar store if you want, but when you're going long-term for gardening, I would recommend getting something more sturdy. Don't recommend the plastic, recommend rubber grip, still a couple other things you need that i use uh shears okay i use two types of shears one is the needle nose type shear uh my spring just popped off of this one but they have the straighter nose uh look like more like scissors what i use these for is for like when i'm harvesting herbs when i'm um harvesting like let's say i'm cutting the cucumbers instead of like trying to twist the cucumber off the vine right at that little tiny little point where the, the cucumber is hanging on it's good to use these scissors to I mean, these shears to go in and snip that little uh, piece off so that you can pull your cucumbers off so i like to use this for that kind of application um, when you have young transplants sometimes you have some brown spots or some uh, dying leaves when they're young, you can actually use these to just cut them off. So these are very good for that. Now, when plants get bigger and sometimes you have to do larger cuts, 
Uh, that's why I use the pruning shears. So if I have large tomatoes or large peppers and I'm trying to cut off, you know, branches or sections that may be dying or something like that, or uh, just cutting things back, I will use the pruning shears for that. This can handle a thicker uh, branch, thicker diameter. So I will use something like that instead of trying to cut it with this and damaging the plant in the process. I use something like this. Also, because I grow blueberries and raspberries and blackberries and I'm trying to mess around with these apples in the back there, the, when it's time to prune them, you know, cutting branches and things like that, I will use the pruning shears for something like that. I don't use these if I'm trying to just come and grab some herbs out the garden. I will use the shears for that. Now, most of the times when you guys are watching videos about um, tools, they will go over those tools that I just showed you. I'm going to show you a couple other things that people th seem to forget. But I think if you're going to be gardening, these are essential. So, for example, a good pair of gloves that is essential if you're going to be doing some gardening. Um, for men especially, sometimes it can be hard because if you go and look for garden gloves, most of the times they have a bunch of flowers on them. They're all cloth. They don't fit larger hands, things like that. So for me, I don't buy garden gloves. I actually just go to the hardware store and just get gloves that are fit me. But the kind of gloves I get, I always get the gloves that have these kind of rubber hands uh, palm because that part is waterproof. And when you're dealing with gardening, you could have just watered, you could have just, it could have just rained. Or if you're digging down in the soil, sometimes it's dry at the top, but deep down, it's a little bit more moist. Dealing with some gloves that um, are waterproof like that are essential. So I love these kind of gloves. They stretch good, they get over big hands, and they can handle moist uh, areas when you're dealing in the garden. So these are essential for me but you definitely want to have a good pair of gloves. Also, a good pair of eyewear. I don't wear these often in the garden, but when I'm doing things like spreading out fertilizer, my dry fertilizer blows in the wind sometimes. I, I will always have on uh, some kind of eyewear when I'm doing that, when I'm transferring um, my soil and compost into my uh, beds and stuff like that. Again, you're you're tossing uh, soil everywhere. Sometimes the wind is blowing and it can blow some of that stuff right into your eyes. I like to have, you know, a good pair of eyewear on when I'm doing that kind of thing. Also for, uh, if you have a bed that's on the ground or you're, you know, you're dealing with your, uh, your pots, your containers on the ground, sometimes it's good to have a good kneeling pad. Save your knees. Um, I'm over 40, so a lot of the gardening tips that you'll hear me always say, I always say, save your back, or you'll always hear me say something like, so, you save your knees, you know, so anything that I'm doing, I always want to make sure that, you know, especially people who are older trying to do this, or even younger, you still don't want to throw your back out, you don't want to throw your knees out, and if you're down on the ground sometimes, especially if you're in a cemented area, or if you just have, you know, stones around, or sometimes just wet outside so when you get down and your your knees will get all wet up from the ground being wet it's good to have a good nailing pad one of the things i want to talk to you guys about is also this is just a ball <laughs> it's all used but garden velcro this stuff is amazing i used to use garden tape i used to use some all these other kind of garden things and these are for when you're staking up your plants and you want to wrap the plants to a stake. And these have been the best out of all of them. I used to swear by garden tape because it was just amazing. It was cheap. You can get it from the dollar store. You can tie the stuff up. Problem is with the garden tape, once, you, once I untie it, I never really reuse this stuff. But the garden Velcro has just been so great. One of the things, let me show you guys. The inside of it has this felt, very soft area and it does not damage the plants and so you know it's easy for you to go around the plant stem 
and go around your stake without damaging the plant. But the best thing about this is, and that's why I have this big ball here, is the fact that they're reusable. When I cut down my pepper plants, when I cut down my uh, tomato plants, I just make sure I keep these, um, these pre-cut Velcro pieces because they don't, they don't give out. I mean, they just work year after year. And once they start getting weak and they, if they're not holding anymore, then I'll just go back and cut off some new ones from the roll. But uh, that roll I have, I mean, I'm still working on the same roll I got uh, three years ago. So I only use about half of the roll just to do all of this stuff. And I have some stuff still out there on you know, my uh, blueberries and raspberries and blackberries and my trees and stuff still have some of this stuff on it. But I still have a half a roll left from three years ago. If this stuff starts to get weak, I'll just cut some more. So garden Velcro is a must. Another thing, I want to talk about footwear. When you come outside to your garden, sometimes, especially if you have a garden like mine, where you have a dedicated area, you're walking out there, it could be rain, it could have just rained, you could have watered. Some of you guys got the irrigation systems. It's good to have good footwear. Now for me, I like to be able to slide my stuff on and come outside. I don't want to tie up shoes and boots to come out and work in the garden. I don't want also use shoes that I would wear elsewhere, outside somewhere. I don't want to mess those up, get them all muddy, messing around in the garden. So I like to just have some slide shoes on. Now, first, I, I wore this kind for a very long time, and I still do, but um, this, just a, the clog style, right? I would normally get black or something like this, looks a little more manly, go into the Walmart aisle, buy these for like 10 bucks, slide your feet in um they don't have thick grooves in the bottom so if your feet if, if it's muddy outside it's easier to wipe your feet to go into the house and it's easy to just stand at your door and kick these off real quick before you walk in tracking mud everywhere so that's why i kind of like these where i stop wearing these is because of the holes that are in them sometimes i will come out and it'll be wet and my feet end up being wet or my socks end up getting wet because of stuff we're getting in the holes so those are not my preferred i will wear them if it's been definitely really dry outside and sometimes i just want to slide something on real quick but my preferred now i went out and bought garden shoes and these are garden shoes for men um if you guys want i could you know post a link of uh these i got these from amazon these are all fully waterproof easy to slide on real quick easy to take off real quick. You know, they're very comfortable shoes and you can wear them. You know, sometimes I'm in the garden and I'm like, oh man, I got to go to the store real quick. And I can just go, go to the store, walk around in these. It's not like you have to walk on, walk on grass. They're comfortable enough to walk on cement and all that good stuff. So I'll leave a link to these garden shoes, uh, especially for the guys out there that can't find what they need. Another thing, very important, people don't talk about a lot is Having, if you're using a guard, uh, you know, a water hose, having a good garden uh, nozzle for your water hose. I don't like the little small hand spray ones. I like these because a lot of times when you're watering, especially in the summertime, I don't like to wet my leaves up unless I'm watering at night or very early in the morning. But I want to sometimes come in and just water the roots. Something like this is perfect because when the your plants get all big and everything like that you can just stick this in and you can get anywhere to water right love this also these things have very high pressure on them so when you're doing things like if you have a pest problem and you want to before you start adding uh, chemicals to your to your garden you may want to just start by spraying off up underneath the leaves and everything like that of the plants something like this has super pressure on it but it also allows you to turn the thing upside down and get underneath the leaves of collard greens and kale and all that good stuff and so that's good it also has more than one uh, uh, setting on there i like that so sometimes you just want to mist sometimes you want to fill up a bucket having something like this perfect
if you're just doing container gardening, sometimes you'll do a watering can. I use watering cans sometimes when I'm doing uh, liquid fertilizer applications. I'll use a watering can. Um, when you're getting a watering can, I will give you a quick tip. Don't get the skinny, tall watering cans with the little small neck at the top of it. Those suck. I'm going to tell you why they suck. They really, because of the, the, the way they're designed, when you fill that bucket up and you start going to pour, and some of you experienced this already, you start going to pour, all your water comes out the top of this thing first because of the way the design is. You want to get a short one, that one that has a lower profile here, but has that long neck there. And then that way, when you go to pour, because of the design of it, it'll come easier out of the front. Also, when we're talking about water, having a water bottle, a spray bottle. These are good because sometimes, like let's say if you're doing a, your plants are having an issue, they're getting yellow and you might want to hit them with some nitrogen or something like that. You can easily spray the leaves with a spray bottle like this. Um, one of the things I recommend this over the other kind that you can get, the normal kind of spray bottles that you can get, the hand trigger ones. I like the ones that you have to pump and they have the adjustable nozzle on the front is because you can make this come out in a mist. If you have a regular spray bottle, spray on the leaves, the droplets are so big, it hits the leaves, runs right off. When you have the mist, when you spray it, the mist uh, droplets are so small, they're able to stick onto the leaves. So when you're doing fertilizer applications on the leaves, or if you want to do, like if you're having a pest problem and now you're gonna have to put some neem oil or some kind of spray like that on there, you want to be able to have something that can spray small enough to actually stick to the plant and not waste your solution because you're spraying and it's just running off. So I do recommend a spray bottle like this. But now if you have a larger garden, larger amount of plants, I would get yourself one of the hand pumps. Does the same exact thing as this, except this allows you obviously to get more done bigger space, still has the adjustable nozzle that you can make it mist. And it has the long handle, which allows you to get up underneath leaves better in the collards and kale and stuff like that. So I do, I use this one more than I use this. Can't talk about anything unless you want to bring out, you got to have some kind of wheelbarrow. When you're transferring soil from somewhere, one place to another, this is it. To save your back. Also for mixing applications. Sometimes like for me when I'm putting different types of, I'm mixing up different types of soil. I got compost, I got perlite, I got peat moss. I may want to mix it up in here first before I actually dump it somewhere. It's good to have something like this. I recommend people who are doing, uh, having themselves a wheelbarrow of some type. This is actually small. This is called a garden cart, not necessarily a wheelbarrow. But for my application, it actually works. So that's what this is. But for people who just have a plain container garden, a couple of containers, what I recommend is, let's say you got two, um, you know, two 27-gallon totes. I would recommend getting three of the 27-gallon totes using the third one, right, as almost, almost like a wheelbarrow, but it allows you to put in soil, mix it together, and, and then you can dump it into the other uh, totes that you're going to actually grow in. And then also, when it's emptied out, you can use it as a storage for all your other garden tools because it won't have holes in it or anything like that. Just put the lid on it and none of your stuff will get wet in the rain. Moving right along. Garden fork. It's excellent. When you have raised beds, um, it's good sometimes you need to loosen up the raised bed because it has become compacted over time. Something like a garden fork will do the job. Also is good for sometimes when you got those weeds down in, the same way you will use the cultivator, you'll use something like this, get it down, get those weeds out and shake it off. Also because of the type of um, composting system that I use, I use this to actually get in and turn my compost. Pitchfork, right? 
Now, if you have a larger composting system, this pitchfork is going to be the way to go over the garden fork, the pitchfork. So that's the reason why I purchased this pitchfork in the first place was for um, I had a larger type of composting system. But I've actually used this for more than one purpose. And even though I have a, a, the tote thing, I do sometimes like to use this pitchfork over the garden fork for turning my compost, even in my tote system. Um, just because the handle is longer, I don't have to bend down as much. And so, again, saving my back. But I've also used this in my raised beds, especially when I'm putting down new uh, soil down. And when I start to fertilize, because when I put my fertilizer in, I like to put this in about two or three inches, shake it, and it actually allows me to get the fertilizer down in the first three inches of the ground without disturbing the soil so much. So that's what I kind of use this for. Here's another version of the cultivator. Great for when you have deep weeds and stuff in. Boom, easy to come in and get it out. Of course, you can do that with the hand trial, but when you have a whole raised bed, you don't want to go through that whole thing by hand. You want something like this, long on it, protect your back, easy for you to get in and, and do that. So that's what I use this for. So I normally only use these kinds of things at the beginning of a season, towards the end of the season when I'm cleaning out the garden. Having a shovel that has the spade top on there, that's a digging shovel. Anytime you see that little spade front, that means they're made to dig holes and do stuff like that. They're not really made to transfer uh, soil like from one place to the other, but you can do that if you need to. If you're only going to buy one shovel, then you'll buy something like this. This will allow you to be able to dig as well as move some stuff. You can also you might not necessarily get the um, <coughs> shovel size. You can actually get it in the small, like garden fork size. And it's called a spade if you find it small like that. It'll be a spade. So a spade or a digging shovel is a necessity. Now, if you're able to get a, another shovel, then you would get a second shovel. This is called a transfer shovel. So this is the shovel that you use when you got soil and you're digging and you're moving it places. The square head allows for more area for you to pick up more dirt and move it along, but it's not made for digging. It's just made for transferring. So when I'm moving my compost, putting down new soil, that kind of thing, this is what I'm using, not my digging shovel. And last but not least, don't have to have something like this, but this is something that I've gotten used to over the last three years, been excellent. This is a kid's garden rake. You can find this and right where the rakes are in the hardware stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, they have the little kid's ones. What I use this for is for a couple different reasons. Say um, I got a garden that's planted and then I'm gonna put mulch down. When I'm putting mulch down, I like to use this garden rake here because it's small enough that I can get around the plants without damaging them and smooth things out. So I use that, this for that. That way I won't have to do it by hand, bending down, getting all moving stuff over and doing all that. Again, putting stress on my back, something like this, I can stand and do that same thing. Also, what I like to use this for is when I'm doing my no dig method, I showed you guys that already, where sometimes after I take out my weeds, I don't turn my soil over anymore in my raised beds. I get the weeds out and then I relieve the, uh, the soil basically intact outside of me taking the weeds out. And so I'll put new compost on top and I like to use this to be able to spread it out evenly in the corners and everything like that so that's what i use this kids garden rake for so guys hopefully this video is helpful to you uh, let me know if you have any tools that you like to use drop that down in the comments below if this video has helped you drop it down like make sure you comment like share subscribe and we'll be bringing you more videos like i always say 
get to growing. Peace.